Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Amy Hess. I for those of you who don't already know me. And a little bit about myself is I have been a cannabis activist for the last five years. I work for an organization called Fields of Freedom for All and we are a human rights based organization. Our main job for the last 13 years, we have been using strategic litigation to find the current laws and the proposed laws that are just not making any sense at the moment. So, I also am a part of an online social club. It is a private Dutton club. And I think that's the reason why I'm here today, just to speak to you a little bit about my experiences working and running a club for the last five years. And then as well as giving you a little bit of an activist opinion of it, as well as the legality around clubs and how they're actually functioning in all of this. So it's amazing to be at a place like the Expo where it can be a little bit deceiving where if you are not part of the industry or you're very new to this, it can almost seem like everything is well and legal and amazing. But what we're witnessing is civil disobedience at its best. And overgrowing the government is one way to do it. But yeah, so we'll unpack that a little bit today. So Fields of Green for All, we started our, well, part of us is obviously a little online private club, and that was started by Merton and Jules, the Gaffey couple, who are our partners. They are lucky enough to have traveled the world extensively through their activism and have made amazing activists all over the world. Part of that, in 2015, they went to Barcelona, and um, they were fortunate to attend their first or visit their first part of cannabis clubs. In seeing this amazing feat from the cannabis clubs in Barcelona, um, they realized what a perfect fit would be for South Africa. So the private social clubs, or the Dutch Private Club Initiative, who started with us around 2015. Our social club was registered along the same time in 2015. Um, but in actual fact, has been secretly going for about since about 2006. So although we don't like to claim first, it is something we don't believe in. We do believe that we are the longest running for this kind of So I'm going to pop onto the slide here. I'm going to start with what is a private cannabis cup? Pretty simply put, it is a private space for members only with access, control, and regulations. So in 2018, we had our incredible privacy ruling, and it was the first in the world to have privacy before medical. So that was quite a feat we had already. And with that, we've seen hundreds of cannabis clubs, shops, dispensaries popping up all over South Africa. Um, these clubs are run in many different ways. I think it's important to also mention now that there is no legal club model. There is no right way of doing it and there is no wrong way of doing it because thank you to our governments, we are over five years overdue of regulations um, and changing of the laws. So that is called self-regulation and that is what we're all doing here. Uh, so self-regulation is not a bad thing. It is finding a gap in the market, a grey area, a loophole, and that's as we have done because we are South Africans, we are really, very good at doing that. So, a private space is pretty simply put. We don't have legalization in South Africa, but what we do have is a privacy ruling. And that privacy ruling should ideally have a cannabis plant under it. So if we're adhering to privacy, the private space, which means no advertising. That is a big one for a lot of people out there. Um, yeah, we would like to keep it within privacy because if you're advertising one, it's not very private then, is it? Okay. Um, access control and members only. A private social club is a community-based, safe consuming area for our community, as it's put. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, what is the purpose of the DACA Private Club? The DACA Private Club allows members access to safe, quality cannabis products. As we know, we don't have any regulations yet. We also, according to SAPRA's website, currently is we have no registered cannabis medicines in South Africa. 
It might have changed slightly, but Sephora had not updated their website in quite a while. I did go and double check. Um, so yeah, uh, safe access to cannabis and cannabis products within a private space, keeping your community safe as well as your members safe. We also like to believe, and it's quite a new term in South Africa, which is harm reduction, and then again, as I mentioned, self-regulation. So the harm reduction aspect of a club is again creating a safe, private space, and emphasis on the private, where members can gather, share, chat, and just build a beautiful community, and again, having access to really safe supplies. So having integrity in your cannabis club would mean that you are having your product tested, you're using your physical clients, and ideally having a closed loop system because trade is pretty legal in South Africa. Another very big important part of cannabis clubs in South Africa, or back in private clubs, is the community aspect. Initially, when we started our Dr. Private Club initiative, we were very big on the non-profit side of things. That is how it's being done in a few places overseas, but since then we've realized that it doesn't necessarily need to be registered as a non-profit. It can be a PCY limited, but we also need to remember that we need to focus on the community aspect of that. So to grow a cannabis community which supports the immediate external community. So the community of litmus is going to be a very big part of having your cannabis club. And um, from what I've seen, there are a few clubs that are doing it right, but there's also a few that unfortunately are missing the community aspect, and it's very much a B2B focused initiative, which does not really fall in line under privacy, but also under the community. We need to be looking after our community, our family, and our loved ones, our neighbors, all of those need to come first. Because as you can see at the expo, it's very much becoming corporately driven. And we want to try and safeguard our communities as well as the supply chain. So another big thing with cannabis cuts is the supply chain. And we've been very talks on that at the expo. But from Heels the Green for All, it's about the community. Using community growers, using your members, having a trade and it's all a barter system within your cups is really important. And most importantly, it is also to look after your grower. So a lot of places, unfortunately, are not protecting the growers that they should go where they should be at least. And your growers are taking all of the risk at the end of the day. So your supply chain, if it is not local, which hopefully it is, we also need to kind of tap into our legacy farmers, our rural farmers, because they have been supplying us with adult use market for centuries, and um, they have unfortunately been left out in this part of legalization, industry, and then social purpose. So, tapping into a little bit more about where the social club model comes from. In South Africa, obviously, we call it a double climate club. And then that is so that we can work within our privacy ruling because it is not legal. So in Barcelona and Catalonia, there are a few other countries. We, as of yesterday, in fact, Germany had a big shift in their legislation, um, which is allowing for adult use, uh, publicly much regulated, much like cigarettes, from what I understood now, it literally only happened yesterday. So that's a win. But if we look at the Barcelona and Catalonia models, for instance, I mentioned earlier when Milton and Jules and Gabby Couple arrived home from Barcelona in 2015, they saw that this would be the perfect one. So Catalonia and Barcelona, or Catalonia and Barcelona have had their first clubs running since about 2001. So that's many years, almost over 20 years. But the clubs are still not legal in Barcelona. So we can only hope that our government will be a little bit more progressive and see the benefits of the adult use market because at the end of the day, the adult use market is the biggest market. We have medical, it's amazing, it has its place. We have industry, we're getting to a beautiful new industry. But what I think a lot of people or a lot of the governments around the world and they don't realize is that the adult use market is your biggest market. If we had to take all of the companies out of here and just put our community together, we would completely like to overshadow the actual businesses. So, much like South Africa, 
I think we've taken a lot of heat from me. Barcelona and Catalonia have used two legal loopholes for grey areas, which is still at the state not legal. So they argue that their politics cannot be considered a crime because they don't encourage anybody to consume and they do not generate profits um, by causing harm to health and others. And in fact, the private social club is very much a harm reduction tool. And when we speak of a harm reduction tool, it again is new language in South Africa, internationally, especially in America, it is completely taken over because cannabis, whilst it is medicine and it's a beautiful plant, it was used in conjunction with many other things. It can help people with addiction, it can help people overcome eating disorders. Various elements, I mean, I don't need to preach to you guys because everybody knows the benefits of cannabis, otherwise, you wouldn't be here, right? So using it as a harm reduction tool and providing a safe space for many South Africans, for example, are unable to grow their own cannabis. They are unable to safely get their own cannabis. Um, and by having a social club, you're creating a community space where they're able to arrive, check in as a member, access control is a big one for cannabis clubs as well, um, and get their safe medicine. I do believe it is all medicine, it is, uh, we have the recreation, we don't really like that word, so it is responsible adult use. And the clubs just facilitate this beautiful community driven space for safe consumptions. And then as previously mentioned, in 2014, because we decided to do it at the BBC context, um, we've had, I'm sure many people here have already got a copy of our little booklet, so it has evolved quite extensively since then. And then we'll get a little bit more into that soon. Then we're going to talk about the legality. So how are all these social clubs popping up all over South Africa? How are all of these, what we like to call pot shops, popping up all over South Africa? And this is the mention of the Section 21s, which is another conversation for another day. Um, so the legalities around the clubs itself, we are still working on that. As I said earlier, there is no legal model yet. Um, as of Tuesday, we were actually meant to go to the local team, which we did. We didn't have to go to the courts. But we had something which is called the Hayes Club case. And I'm not sure most of you have heard about the Hayes Club before. They were a growers club model, so a little bit different to a social club, but still relevant to our big cause. And Neil was unfortunately arrested and shut down in 2020. He then had the courage and conviction to apply for a state prosecution, which he unfortunately lost, which led to Field of Green Court joining as amicus of the court, which means friends of the court, so that we could try and push this case forward because it was going to be, he was the first model to be actually tried in court. So Tuesday we were meant to arrive in court to the case for the Supreme Court of Appeal and unfortunately we received communication that the state has postponed again. So we will not have any clarity yet until about the fourth quarter, which will be at the end of the year. The reason why we joined the case for case and tried to push forward and to support Neil through all of this is because it is a precedent taking case and it benefits each and every single one of us. He has again had the balls to actually challenge this and it has really affected his personal life as you can imagine he's lost everything since then so yeah we're really hoping to move forward with that um, with that we've also found the need to create the Dhaka private clubs memorandum and affiliation with Fields of Green for all the reason we did that was because legal laws are really large and when you're fighting something as large as this in a constitutional court in the Supreme Court of Appeals. We really have to put in our best expert witnesses or expert lawyers who have written an incredible head of arguments and um, we created our block model, our members in random and affiliation in order to help us pay for the legal laws but also to keep the community a part of it so that we can find a way forward legally in South Africa. <laughs> Then we have the private purposes bill. So again, cuts are not legal, trade is still illegal in South Africa. The trade will unfortunately not be coming through obviously in the bill that has recently been signed by Parliament because it is a private purposes bill. And that is also why we find that the cuts are the perfect cutting for our private purposes bill because they are private, well should be. 
have a lot of different water in the arms at the moment. And um, then we have pot shops in section 21, which falls into those that are not really complying to the little bit of self regulation that we have and have created. So I just wanted to quickly distinguish the difference between what I like to call a pot shop and a private cannabis club. The private cannabis club, as I mentioned, has access control. You have to sign up to become a member. Whether it's an insignificant amount or they have a larger yearly amount, that's completely up to the club. You have harm reduction, you have membership care, much like if you had to go to a golf club, for instance, and you are a paid member, they've gotten to know you, it's community driven. You arrive at the bar, your barman serves you, the whiskey he knows you like, he is there to support you, be your psychologist, you're listening here. A cannabis club can be run like that too. And um, that's where the membership care comes in. So understanding your members, understanding their needs, understanding what they are needing in terms of medicine. Having a good butt tender who can explain the different effects of certain genetics or strains of cultivars to you. Those things are relevant. However, we've seen a lot of pot shops popping up. And if you can walk into a cannabis shop, club dispensary, whatever they call themselves, then you can just walk in and buy your cannabis over the counter. That is not a club. Okay, that is trade and it is illegal and just a blatant outbreak thing. So, number one, buying cannabis straight up over the counter, that is not a club and it is, again, straight out trade. And then we have the Section 21s. There's been a lot of talk about that. I'm not going to touch too much on that. But as a community, we have also the need to be questioning our private clubs, our dispensaries, and our shops that we are buying our cannabis from. And if anything doesn't seem right, ask a question. If they're not willing to answer your questions, well, then you should probably be questioning the legality and like the, the way that they're running the club. But a Section 21 is for unregistered medicine. It is not a new concept that has been around for over 20 years. It is for medicines that are not registered in South Africa, as I mentioned earlier. SACRA, according to their website, still do not have any registered medicines. However, I have heard differently. So that's still much like everything else, but confusing. Um, so if you are not consulting with a doctor at your Section 21 dispensary, if you are not having cannabis dispensed by a registered pharmacist, and you are not having your Section 21 papers, not a card, your actual paper is your legal work, and um, if they are not renewing that or reapplying that for that every six months for you, please question that and you know try and understand where you're getting your medicine from and how it is is arriving on your doorstep or over the counter because there's a lot of things. Just a very quick one. So as I mentioned, Merton and Jules saw the need in 2015 for the back of private clubs. So just a few little tips on how to, if you are interested, open the club because what we currently only have is best business practice. And that means it's not legal, but what we can do is try to comply to the current business practices we have, like any other business. Pay your taxes, register your company, try and break only one law at a time, essentially. <laughs> um, so yeah, keep it small, keep it private. Again, I understand that people are, there's a need to eat, pay your school fees, pay your bills, all those things, but there's also a commitment that we have to our community, especially as being fellow cannabis and soda. So keeping it private and small keeps you safe, it keeps your community safe, it keeps your members safe. Because remember, whilst you might be complying to the best practices as much as you can, when your members walk out the front door with their cannabis, they are still facing a very big threat. The police have never stopped arresting. We run a 24-hour emergency hotline, and it has never stopped ringing. There are raids currently happening all the time, very often from competition clubs, which is also not in control firstly, and just not what this community is about. So snitching your neighbor is very much a lot of life, so keeping it small and private helps you also stay safe in that regard. Run your business ethically, be brave and work with integrity. So those are kind of like my cause in mind. So, Integrity is something that we find really lacking in a lot of the clubs, pot shops and dispensaries around. And um, I think it explains itself really working with integrity. So there's that. 
um, being brave and working empathy, that is if you're wanting to do it yourself, it is very possible to open a private cannabis club on your own. Um, and we do kind of endorse that people do try and do it on their own, obviously using the right tools and people that are available to you now in order to work as safely as you, as you can with the lack of regulations that we have or don't have. So, if you are wanting to open a club and you are confused or wanting to understand the best way to do it in terms of legalities and trying to keep your constitution and your club in as safe as possible, there are a few amazing people that have worked tirelessly over the years. They are part of the industry. They have been for many years. We have fields of green for all. Believe in what they do, they believe in what we do, and there is a bit of community that you can rely on. So I put a few of those up, which you're welcome to obviously go and contact those people. A couple of them are here today, so please do reach out, have the engaging conversations, ask the hard questions, because if you're unable to ask the questions, then great flags should be going up. So consultants and industry specialists at the moment who can help you kind of get your constitution or just help guide you the best way forward to keep yourself and your members as safe as possible would be like Harambe Solutions, High Street or Grow on Africa. Now those are organizations that understand the laws, they understand the, or the lack of laws, they understand member care, they understand harm reduction, they also understand business. So they are good people to go to. Um, I think one thing also I wanted to point out is that in South Africa, we've done it a very unique in South African way, whilst overseas, the social, or specifically in Barcelona and Catalonia, the social club is the model. And how you run your business is how you run your business. The main thing is working with integrity, keeping your growers safe, and keeping your members safe. But in South Africa, we have many different models available, and that's why I keep stressing that there is no legal or right way. There's many ways to do it, but we all just need to do it together and with integrity. So these people can help guide you through all of that. And then seeking legal advice is kind of an obvious one, but I put up a few trusted people who do know what they're talking about. There are a lot of lawyers out there, but it's just a very new industry and idea in South Africa. So we, these are people that have worked successfully with clubs, helping to get them established, again, working on the legality, the club rules, the members here, and all of those things. And those would be shrimpers attorneys. They have a whole cannabis department. There is also covenants who are our or uh, our lawyers, they are phenomenal at what they do as well. They get for court many attorney, I'm sure most of you know Stefan Bezegamo, he is a phenomenal lawyer who also works with us and he can help you set up your club constitution and work as safely as you possibly can in this very great area that we're all operating in. And then there's also Craig Harvey Attorneys who is an incredible human. Uh, we work with him quite extensively in referrals because as I said, we run a 24 hour emergency helpline. And he's just a reasonable human who's not gonna overcharge you or anything like that. And he's also written great for the cannabis department and has a wealth of information on the legalities around cannabis. And then signing up to field to green for all DPC membership for strategic litigation, support and mode of conduct. So again, we saw the need, our code of conduct, which we have worked together with a few key players within the club sector, so people like the Greenside, Myron. Um, we just really feel that there's a need as a community to work together to abide by certain principles. How you run your business is your business. We don't care about how you run your business as long as you're doing it with integrity and you're abiding by the laws that you do currently have in the sense of paying your taxes and those kinds of things. So, if I can go to the next slide, we can learn a little more about fields of green for Oh, this was just an incredible line. In order to protect our privacy as enshrined in our constitution, to protect our rights to self-regulate, we invite operators to agree to this very, very simple code of conduct. Whoa, too many. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay. So, as I said, with a few industry players, we created this code of conduct. Um, and it's all pretty simple, right? Do you think that these are basic core principles that any person going into this with good intentions will follow? But as I've expressed today, unfortunately, we see a lot of 
different ideas around me. So it simply puts integrity. Our club is operating with the utmost integrity. Again, self-explanatory. Privacy. Our club maintains access control on all levels. Our club does not advertise to the public. So again, advertising does not fall within privacy and that is all we currently have. I know it's really hard to not want to show your incredible products, show your incredible space, your branding, your branding packages you spend thousands on. But in order to keep yourself and your members safe, it's really important to keep the fight. Administration. Our club is impeccable with business admin and compliance with existing laws. So again, base business practices. Find yourselves a really good accountant who understands what is really going on in terms of the legalities and the risks that have been taken with this. So we can help you get your books in order, make sure if you need to register for that, pay your taxes. Because God forbid the police arrive at your door, you need to justify and show A, your membership to stop you from and all of those things, but also that you're complying with your business laws. Um, member care. Our club advised by principles of quality control and harm reduction. So they can say a little bit about our private club. Again, it is very private and the reason we do that is to keep ourselves safe. It is by referral only. We are only online. We do not have an open space for that because we also have a lot of other stuff to do. So having people over for coffee every five minutes would be a little bit of a, a time waster. But um, access control, member care, Having safe products, making sure that you're getting, if you're not a closed loop system like we are, we cultivate, process, and um, create all of our products in house. We know how our cannabis is grown, we know what was put into it, we know how it was extracted, and we know that we're getting our members safe, tested products. There are many places you can have your products tested, be it the raw power or the end product, tests like your laboratory or an incredible case um, that can help you know exactly what you're applying to your members. And then the harm reduction, again, membership care, checking in with your members. If you're too big, you're not going to know who your members all are, and you're not going to know what their needs are, you're not going to know if maybe this month they're suddenly consuming 400 grams of cannabis. Um, and maybe want to check in and see what's going on. Providing that community aspect, something that we've all grown up to know and love as a cannabis and stoner community. And then zero tolerance for bribery, fraud, and corruption. Our club operates within the laws of South Africa despite laws being in limbo. A big one, guys. That's also where the access control comes in. So I know for a fact, and I know Kilda Green Paul has always been very vocal about this. But we know a lot more than you guys realize, and there are so many clubs, pop shops in this century that are paying the police off every month. We know about your brown envelopes, and we really need you to stop doing that because you are creating harm where there shouldn't be any harm. Okay? And that's what I'm going to touch on that one. And then, yeah, the access control again falls into zero tolerance and bribery because we don't send anyone in, including the police. Okay? Um, yeah, and then support and collaboration. Our club support drug policy reform at the highest level. Our club collaborates across the cannabis sector to benefit all. Again, community driven. Nothing about us without us. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our incredible community who have supported the various strategic litigation and court cases over the years. The trial of the pond, the prince ruling. That was all done because of you guys, because you saw what we needed to do. You knew that the laws were wrong and you knew that we could do this together. But I must also say that the job is not done yet. Again, as you can see, it might be very deceiving, but cannabis is still not legal in South Africa. We did not get a legalization route, and we got a privacy route. And there's so many things to do. I know it's not club, it's not about clubs, but things just at the top of my head that we need your support as a community is to, to change things like the labor court, which we're actually currently waiting for a route. So until you actually face with using your job, I don't think it's, you know, you're not going to think about things like that. There's the children's court. How many people have lost access to the children who are testing positive for cannabis? That's another thing we need to address. There's so many different threats to you, your members, and your community 
And that's why we at Heels of Green all need you guys and your support so that we can continue to change and fight for the rules the way that we have been for 13 years. And then one more, just an example of our um, actual certificate. Once a club decides to sign up with Heels of Green for all, we're almost time. Once a club decides to sign up with Heels of Green for all, and you've been with us for three months, we will issue with you with this best practice certificate. And that certificate you can proudly display to show that you are working with integrity and you're supporting the community as a whole. And you're supporting people to bring all the certificate together. Thank you guys for your time. I think my time is up. And have a beautiful day. And if you have any questions, please find me at the Field to Green Falls School.